Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a thermal imaging camera. This is the RT100. Alright, so let's go ahead and open it up. On the front you can see that uh, I, I chose the Android version. There is an Android and an iPhone version of this thermal camera. And on the side of the packaging you can see that there is a QR codes for the PC software, the app for your phone, and also the Foxwell website. And all the contact information that you need. Alright, inside the box, first you'll see a small user's manual and a case. Inside the case is the thermal imaging camera, a lens cleaning cloth, and a USB-C to USB-C extension cord which has a USB-A adapter. All right, a little bit about this small little thermal camera. Uh, here is the thermal lens right here on the front. And this model has a USB-C port on top. On the back, it just says Foxwell Smart Thermal Imaging. And the entire case is made out of aluminum. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and install the software. Uh, it, there's a QR code right inside the manual. Or you could go to your Google Play Store and type in Fox IR. All right, well, I downloaded the app by going to the App Store and typing in Fox IR and uh, installing it. So let's go ahead and open up the app and see what it looks like. All right, when you first open it up after installing it, it's gonna ask you if you want notifications. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit allow because I know I can always disable that later if I want to. Uh, it says, welcome to Fox IR. Uh, if you agree to the terms of service. And of course, you do want this app to be able to take pictures and record video. So while using the app. And then it says, please plug in your device. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. All right, plugged in. All right, initializing, our uh, image initializing. And it looks pretty staticky. And there we go. Okay, so let's just kind of look around. I noticed that when you first install it, uh, it will give the uh, temperature in Celsius. And here in the United States, we don't use Celsius, we use Fahrenheit. So that's the first thing I'm going to want to switch. And I'm guessing if we just go to settings, right there on the very top, we'll just switch it to Fahrenheit. Uh, while we're in settings, let's go ahead and look at the rest of them. We have the temperature unit, Celsius and Fahrenheit. We have temperature calibration, so you can, uh, it looks like you can calibrate, uh, well, you can calibrate the temperatures. The next one is image calibration, so you can go ahead and calibrate that if needed. Uh, then there's the language, but I'm not going to mess with that because I'm just going to follow what's on my phone. And uh, there is also about, and that just tells you about privacy privacy policies, terms of service, uh, frequently asked questions, feedback, and the app version. All right, I'm going to go and click on home again at the bottom. And now it is set to Fahrenheit, and now I can kind of look around. So I'm going to look at this light right up here, and you can see that it shows multiple spots of the temperatures. Um, and on the right hand side, you can see the high and the low of what it's monitoring currently. So 170 degrees Fahrenheit is the inside of that LED bulb up there. Now, uh, and then 67 or 68 degrees is the back wall uh, and my hand. Um, and then 66 degrees is over here on this wall. Uh, if we look, if I look directly at the camera, you can see that I'm using a GoPro and it is currently 113 degrees Fahrenheit. But the real reason I wanted to have a thermal imaging camera review on this channel is you've probably actually seen me use a different thermal camera because I believe thermal cameras are the best way to find hot spots in the devices that you're using when it comes to connecting your batteries to inverters or solar charge controllers to batteries because you can feel around, but it's a lot easier just to look at your setup and see if there is a hot spot on one of your connections. So let's go ahead and check that out now. All right, here's a partial look of my 24 volt system. And you can actually see that I'm doing a test on a, uh, a portable power station right now. And if you look at the thermal camera, 
Uh, I mean, this portable power station, I have it plugged into the cigarette lighter adapter and it is 136 degrees Fahrenheit on right where that plug is plugged in. And you can see all the heat on there. And then also my testing unit right there, which all it does is it generates heat by, it just wastes energy by generating heat. And it's 116 degrees. But underneath that, that is a 180 amp hour, 24 volt bank, and you can't see anything. I mean, there might be one, I mean, yeah, there's, there's no, there's no hot spots at all for there. Um, I also have three 24 volt, 100 amp hour batteries connected in parallel right here. And again, you cannot see any, there's no hot spots at all to my connections. I mean, you can see my hand and when I let it go, you can see my fingerprints. So this thing is pretty sensitive. That's pretty neat. But overall, uh, there are no hot spots in my setup whatsoever, which is exactly the way that you want it. Like even on my shunt right here, uh, it is it is not hot at all. We're, we're talking 77 degrees. Now granted, this setup is only, it's only pulling 360 watts. That's not much at all for this 4,000 watt inverter. So let's look at more features on this camera. All right, at the bottom, you can see a little camera image. Let's go ahead and click on that. And that will bring up either, do you wanna take photos or do you wanna take video? And then what you can do is click on the, um, the slider bars and you can hit a delay. You can do a voice recording um, or you can do like the shutter. Uh, there's more settings right here, which this you can take pictures continuously or you can actually put a watermark on your pictures. And then when you click video, the button just turns to a red and it will actually start recording the screen. If you click on the the image to the right of the camera, which looks like uh, a little box with four little spots on it. Um, it's kind of uh, how do you want to find the points of where you want to find the temperature, I guess you could say. Like right now, I just like you can have it on full. So now I'm just taking a image of the uh, of the camera that I'm actually recording with again. And you can see that the camera is 122 degrees. The wall behind it is 69 degrees. But if I wanted to do a point, I could do exactly where I want. So I could press on the point that I want and get the temperature of that press. So you can point at any spot and get that temperature. And then you just hit delete to remove all the points. You can hit line. And what that does is it gives you a high and low point to the two points that you made. So it kind of shows the difference of the two ends of the line. And then there is frame where you can just make a box and it will show you the highs and lows inside that box. And then again, delete will just delete whatever selection you chose. All right, the next image over is actually like a, uh, in a picture in picture view. If you click on that little camera, it will show camera and fusion. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on camera and what that does is it shows like a picture in picture of what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at that lamp and it also shows you the thermal image of the, of the image. It's so hard to describe this. So you can use your phone camera and the thermal image camera at the same time. Okay, and if you hit fusion, it kind of shows like uh, the opacity, I think it's called, of the, of the on top image. So you can make it like 25%. And so it's, uh, so it's very clear. I mean, you can make it a zero, so it's like a perfect image. And then there's the camera on the side. Or you can go and, and so you can barely see it. If you hit the color palette, so here is the, the standard that uh, is the default. But then you can click on this or choose that. You can choose a different one. I mean, there's also grayscale. So you can see it like that. Uh, I mean, there's, it looks like there's a lot of, a lot of different color options that you could choose from. And then there is a little temperature gauge. So how the sensor works on the thermal camera itself. Right now it's set between negative four and 302 degrees Fahrenheit, or you can have it set for high, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, all the way up to over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Or you can click on auto and it will adjust accordingly. And then the three little buttons on the far right, 
it will show contrast, sharpness, an alarm, pseudo color, and it can rotate 90 degrees. All right, well, this was a pretty high overview, but I do like the features that it has. I like the fact that you can, you know, change from Fahrenheit to Celsius, which I would have been surprised if you couldn't have, but also the ability to do picture in picture so you could see a live real image along with the thermal image underneath. That's pretty neat. And then also being able to really pinpoint what you're wanting to measure. So you could press like a point or you could do a line so you could see the difference between the two spots or you can just box something out to see only that part in the image itself. You can also take pictures to save for later and record video to save for later. And with that software, there is reporting features, which I didn't even get into. When it comes to the physicality of this item, I love the fact that it is aluminum. So if it for some reason falls off the bottom of your phone, it's not going to just break if like it was a cheap plastic. I think it'll really withstand a pretty good size fall. So if you have any questions about the RT100 thermal imaging camera, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item in my description just in case you want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye bye.